Hello everyone and welcome to Create with Chris. Hi, I am Chris Hoy. I'm glad you joined me today. I am an artist and designer, also the owner and founder of Cupboard Distributing, which is your one-stop shopping for everything you need to create and have um, everything you need at your fingertips. I also own the Scrapbook Outlet, which is primarily paper crafting, but we have found out that so many of these products just work hand in hand with our painting world. Um, I also, as a result of demand, we started CD stencils, so we not only can uh, create stencils, but I, am, I can create stencils to go with the projects I design, which makes really um, if you're not into little tiny details such as snowflakes and lettering, makes it go so much easier and gives a more pro professional result. Uh, also own Pixelated Palette, which is the number one e-zine on the web for decorative painting. So thank you again for joining me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, last week we started painting a candle glow ornament and we got this far so um, again I've got Lindsay on the other end and she's manning the helm so if you have any questions go ahead and send in your comments and she's keeping a tab on those I do go back and review them after we are finished so that if there's anything that I missed or she missed that we make sure we um, let everyone know and answer all of your questions uh, today we're going to finish this. This is how far we got last time and we got a pretty good uh, amount finished. Really doesn't take a long time uh, to do a small ornament. What's fun about it is what we're going to do today. Last week we did kind of all the um, prep and base coat and got everything to this point. So we're ready to add all the fun details on it. And I noticed last week when I did my halo, we put these little starbursts on there. I, I didn't think, and down here is what I'm looking at, I didn't think I had enough sparkle and pizzazz there. So I went back and I thought, I'm going to brighten them up. And I started doing that. And then I thought, well, maybe we should incorporate, incorporate that into what we're doing today. So I'm going to, this is my 18 aught script liner. And I had this brush designed specifically to my needs. I, I sent the specs. I wanted a brush that was a mid-length liner that I could load up, still have good control, get a super fine line, and not have to struggle. And I'm telling you what, this little brush is called Chris's Epic Script Liner. This little brush is a diehard. I, I can get years of painting out of it, and it still looks as good as the day I bought it, or the day I received it. So, I'm thinning my paint down to an ink-like consistency, and I think maybe last week I thinned it down a little bit too much because they were really pale. So I wanted to go back and kind of brighten those up, add a few more, and like over here, I'm just going to put a few more on there. And if it doesn't flow on well, you don't have enough water on your brush. There we go. We want a nice long stroke. Again, I still don't have enough. It's just like a fine line between getting it loaded correctly and having it flow just right. Alrighty, so now we, we've got the brush loaded. And you should be able to paint quite a few of these uh, strokes before you reload if your brush is loaded correctly. I think I'm going to add just a little one out here just to kind of keep that sparkle going. This one down here just very nondescript. I can go in there, just brighten that up. If I go too fast, I get a little bit sloppy. So we want to make sure that you have good control. I want to put one right there and maybe one right here. And then I'll go back and just put a little tiny dot in the center of those. Over here, look how pale this side over here. And you can see how much brighter this side is compared to over here. So we'll just go back and enhance those and get those brightened up a little bit. I keep going back. I don't have my brush quite loaded correctly yet. 
All right, what a difference. Let's put a little one out here where you got a dot there. All right, now that looks so much better. I always say just a, a few little strokes of paint makes such a huge difference. Another thing we need to do is add a little highlight on this candle sh uh, shaft. I have my number five. This is my radical round. This is another brush that I had developed just for me. I wanted a brush that would hold a lot of paint, have a nice tip on it, and just be super, super versatile. Just going to drag a highlight down there. Just got a very light touch. And I can go back and reload. It's always easier. I think this is my motto. It's always easier to add more paint than it is to try to pull paint off. And a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. And I'll just go over it until I get that nice brightness that I want. And I can always go back and brighten it, so I'm not too worried about it at this point. Now, another thing I want to do is pop these little berries in there. But we've got an issue with red against red. And what we need to do is create contrast. I'm going to use Payne's Gray. And I forgot to bring in my Payne's Gray Americana, so I'm just using the, um, or the um, Media Fluid Acrylics. And if you've not tried these, um, these are just amazing colors. And they're hard to describe unless you actually have a hands-on. But I will tell you, just a teeny bit of paint will be all you need. And I always squirt out more than I need and think, ah, oh, it's just too much. But these colors are so saturated and so pigmented that you don't need a lot, which I know a bottle of this might be more than a bottle of the Americana, but this will last two, three times longer. So really, you get a bigger bang for your buck with the Media Fluid Acrylics. Another plus on the Media Fluid, and I've just got a teeny tiny bit squirted out. And it's, I know it's going to be too much, but um, we'll go with that. Another plus on these, they dry with a little bit of a satin sheen. So you get this nice little uh, finish on them as well. And I'm going to use my half inch angle. I'm just going to go in and touch a little bit on the toe. Work that paint, really work it into your bristles. I don't want to just go in and scoop it and have a blob on my paint. I want to have a soft edge on it, and I want it to be blended well. So I spend more time loading probably than stroking. Now I know my, my berries are going to be around the base of the candle. These over here, I'm going to set them apart, but I still want to have a good contrast. So we'll start with this, and you're going to think, oh my gosh, that's way too much. But remember, those berries are going to go down there and brighten that. The same token, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to darken where those berries are going to nestle so that they're in a nice little quiet background. That will help them. Anytime you have light against dark, it's going to help that really to stand out and pop. And we'll just bring that right up in there. Okay, so I've got a nice dark base in there. And I think the camera makes it look a little bit darker than what it actually is on here. I've got a little bright spot right there. I'm going to just tone that down. Pay attention to little details. Some of it you can just say, oh, that doesn't matter, but some of it does. So take a look as you go down each step to make sure that you're not going to have to go back and fuss with it a little bit later. Well, I've got that on my brush down here. I want a little more contrast right where that holly leaf. See how I can pop that out just with that little bit of Payne's Gray shading here also. Just pay attention when you, when you do different steps. Kind of take a look about and see where everything's at. And you can really build it up all at the same time and create a lot less work for yourself. And because we have this dark background, this paint's gray, not only creates a shadow, but it also is going to create a little bit of dimension. And it will look good on that background. Alright, so we've got 
that darkened in a little bit. When we did the candle shaft, what I did was base coat it with melon or coral shell, sorry. I kind of toggle. Any bright color would will work as a background. Um, the red is so very translucent to try to put it over these dark colors. You're just going to end up with dark, dark berries, and I'm not a fan of that. So I'm going to use the bright color as a background. And Oh, I wanted to show you my Payne's Gray. I used a lot of the Payne's Gray, and I think I have 99% of what I squirted out still on my palette. So media fluid acrylics are amazing. Do you need to buy the whole line? No, just a few critical colors to get you started. I'm a big fan of the quinacridones. I don't know, I kind of like the name, but there are beautiful colors. And the sap green, the, the Payne's Gray, the deep, dark, rich colors are just truly amazing. Okay, so to create the berries, I am using the handle end of my brush. That one's going to be a little bit too big, I think. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to try and see what, what it, size I get. See, that's not a bad size. Maybe I'll go with that one. And I want to vary the sizes. I think that adds just a little more interest. So I'll put kind of randomly. Get those in there. And put one down there. Now, when you dip dot, I don't know if you can see it or not, I've got this big bubble of paint in the center. Number one, it's going to take forever to dry, and number two, you're going to have a raised bump there. So, I thought, got to be a way to get rid of that. So I played around, I thought, well, if you can dot it on, dip dot it on, you can dip dot it off. So clean the handle end of your brush off, go in, and just carefully lift that paint out until you reduce it to a nice flat surface. Now, if you live in an arid uh, climate, you're, you're not going to be able to do all of them and then go back and pull this out, because as soon as it starts to... Uh, tack up or dry and you go in to lift it out you're going to dig a hole and um, you don't want that. In Ohio we have enough humidity in the air that we can dip dot quite a bit and um, still have time to work with it. Now what I've done I've, re I've reduced the amount of paint that's in there. I have it fairly flat. It's not perfectly smooth and flat but I'm okay with that because I can go back and um, float over that and color over it and get the, the red berries that I want without having that huge bump to work around. Also, I'm not going to have to wait forever. I did bring, oh, I think I'm going to have a problem here. I brought my hair dryer, but I think all my plug-ins are full. So, you know what I do have? I have one of these old-fashioned... <laughs> One of the, you, you stick in your, okay, there we go. So I'm going to dry that real quick. The heat dryer certainly, and I, I use a heat gun. I like that really well. It's going to make it go faster. And so we'll hit that right now and just let it sit there. Um, I'm going to add, let that sit. Let's add some little uh, fluffy things in there to kind of break it up and that's what I did with the little berries and uh, in order to make that kind of fit in there it's, it's I, I call it the baby's breath and I want to add a little vine back there I'm using slate gray sticking with that epic script liner it's just perfect for so many pretty little small details and you can get beautiful comma strokes with it. You can also add um, eyelashes and get some wider, thicker strokes if you really pile the paint on. Alrighty, so I have some slate gray. Again, I'm just going to load it up and work that paint in the bristle. I have a lot of paint on there, but you can see I've got a gray palette. Oh, you can see that it's still very thin. Let me go over here. Very thin and narrow. So I've, I maintain the shape of the bristle. 
I just want to make sure that I have enough paint on there so when I start out I can create that little curl and without having to stop and reload or the brush dragging dry. Okay, we just want a little bit of a curly cue in there. Maybe add one over here. I'm not going to do a whole lot. Just kind of fill in those little empty areas. And we'll put one over here. A little curl on that one and one up here as well. Now, every time you do something like this, when you just kind of um, drop it in, it, you know, just let it kind of happen. You don't have to be exact. And sometimes I think when you struggle and work really hard, if I had traced a line on there and tried to follow that line, it just looks kind of stiff and mechanical. When you let it just flow, it's so much more natural and fluid. Okay, I am using Snow White. I'm gonna get in trouble because I'm gonna have a lot of dip dots on here. And I'm gonna do one, just so we can not get hung up on letting it dry. And that's the tiny end of my stylus. I want my berries to go from kind of big to small because they get smaller in the end of the vine. So I'm going to flip over to the larger end of my stylus. Okay. Kind of let that just randomly happen. I want one out there on the end. That's probably a little bigger than I wanted. So what happens is that one's too big. So I will go back and just kind of beef up some of these that are too tiny to make it look like it belongs a little bit more. I have something big on the end of my stylus, which is probably called dried paint. Okay, now we've got that little thing going on. Oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and put a couple more down here. Okay. Oh, I better leave it alone. Okay, well, I can always go back and add more. You know how that goes. So we've got those kind of dropped in. Actually, let's go ahead and do them all. And we can work on the lid and let those little guys dry. And add some few. See how that really breaks up that dark area? Kind of adds a little bit of um, lightness and it really adds a little bit of whimsy in there. Movement, I guess, is the word I want. See what a difference that makes. Like somebody just opened up the eyes. I still want one right there. I don't know why. Oh yeah, I don't know why. You just need a one there. Alrighty, let's work on the jar lid up here while that all dries. And we want to start adding some shading. This is a really simple technique. It's just shadows and highlights. But if they're added in the correct place, it makes such a big difference. Now we have base coated the jar lid with zinc and we're gonna keep that zinc. Um, starting with, we're gonna highlight the top edges first with the slate gray. I've already got that on my palette. Um, doesn't matter what size brush you use. It's a small area, quarter inch angle would be fine. I just like a half inch angle. I'm comfortable with it and um, it works well for me. So we're going to go in and define each one of those little layers of the ridges. Now, if you are using a brush and struggling, take a look at your brush. Often, it's not you, it's the tools you're using. And uh, there's been a couple times when I sat down and paint, I think, what is wrong with me? I can't paint anything today. And I look at my brush and it's a, it's a sad mess. So. You know, they do 
have a life. <laughs> they do come to a point where you have to retire them um, and, and go back and get a brand new brush. And boy, what a treat that is to get a brand new brush. Um, so take a look at your brushes. You want a chisel edge, sharp point, nice smooth. You know, once they start to fray out or fluff up, it, it does create a lot more work. And it's not that you're not good. Your brush is just creating a lot more uh, problem for you. Okay, so I'm going to go across the top of each one of these. I just stuck my hand in my berries. These are edges. Okay, and maybe I should have went to a smaller brush. I'm going to switch back over to that quarter inch angle. Everything I said, just forget. All right. Oh, yeah. A little more control with a quarter inch brush. Now, I've not been too fussy with this. I just want to make sure that I get those ridges defined so that I know exactly where those lines are going to be. Maybe I'll give this a quick dry here. And dry enough. I want to go back now and add a lit, little bit of darkness. Because everything on here is blue tone, um, I'm going to stick with the Payne's Gray as my shading color. It creates a lot of continuity and that's what makes it work. These colors bounce off of each other. Somebody just asked me what I clean my brushes with. I use um, as far as tools, I have this little brush scrubby. After I'm finished, um, I clean. I use the DecoArt brush cleaner, and I have one of these um, Mona Lisa brush tanks. It's probably going to scare everybody if you look down in it. Oh, it's not too bad. <laughs> um, it's filled with brush cleaner. Usually it's kind of a hot mess in there. Um, I, d I never clean it out. I, I think I did clean it not too long ago. Um, I usually clean it out maybe once a year or so. Um, what happens is when you clean your brushes, all the paint and settlement goes to the bottom. Can you see the screen in there? Is it like a dome screen? So I can rub my brushes over in the, in the fluid. Now, before I do that, I do clean them out pretty well with water. But I run them through the fluid, and then I just gently go across. And these are little, like, prongs. So it goes in between the bristles and it gets that paint out. And what I like about this brush cleaner is the Deco Art Deco Magic. Okay, we had to jump out and come back in. It seems like something was lost in the connection. So we'll go back to painting. If you missed out, I just shaded below each ridge with the paint's gray. So you didn't miss anything. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, whether it's weather or connection or internet or that little chipmunks aren't turning the wheel fast enough. I'm not sure. All right, so we've added. Are we good, Lindsay? Yes. Yeah, okay, we're good. We're back up. All right, so we've shaded the highlighted the top with uh, slate gray, the bottom with Payne's gray. And I think it's dry enough. I'm going to hit it just a little bit more. And remember I talked about using the blue tones to add highlights. Going back in with Spa Blue, because this is such a pretty glassy color, and we're going to use this to highlight the mason jar as well. So if we add highlights on the mason jar, the same color as we're adding on the lid, it's just really going to work together super well. I am going back in with my quarter inch angle. Now my highlights go from the top left. So they're coming from this direction. So this side over here is going to be just a little bit brighter. So I can go in 
add these highlights on. And we're going to be adding more than just one little highlight on this thing. So, just kind of go ahead and get that first one on there so that we can really start to show those ridges up. It's a little bit brighter over here. I'm okay with that. And I get excited. I don't like to wait. But I think we need to wait just a hair more. I think that's long enough. Alrighty. So we need to add more brightness in there. I have my number five radical round. Picking up just a touch of Snow White. I usually end up adding my highlights three or four times and here's the reason why. How do I know my highlights up here are going to match my highlights on the jar? They, they have the same light source so the reflection should be of equal value. So if I just do this and stop and then when I go down to my jar and I put those on uh, they have to have the same brightness. So I'm going to add a little bit here work on the jar and then I can add more in both places if needed to kind of balance them out. So I'm going to hit this top edge just a little bit stronger. And what I've done on my radical round, I've kind of flattened it out a little bit so it's not a point. So this little brush is so versatile. This is Snow White I'm using. I'm going to decide where I'm going to add those highlights. And this is more of a dry brush. And there's going to be some softer ones on the other side as well. But my strong ones are be here. And they look really bright now, but I'm telling you, when we go back and add these other highlights, not going to be enough. So, not hard to do. And it looks a little messy here, but we don't have anything on this lip of the jar. So that's what will clean all that up and make that work well. All right, let's go back down to these little berries. We have added the base on them. Now we need to top coat them. I'm using Watermelon Slice, my very favorite color in the whole deco art line. But watermelons are my very favorite. Okay, hopefully we won't have any more issues here. I just got a message. Right, let's go in and I top coat these berries. My eighth inch awesome angle, another brush I had made. Now when I go in to add the highlights or top coat on this, the top left is where my light source is. That's going to be a little bit lighter. So I'm kind of scooping around the bottom and up the right side. And that just gives them that nice red rosy touch. I'm going to be doing quite a bit to these berries to kind of make them really work well. That one's just a little messy. I'm going to clean that one up just a touch. I should put my glasses on. I can see them a little better. They look good down here, but when I look in the camera and see them up close, they look a little messy. Okay. Back to my quarter inch angle and Payne's Gray. Because what I want to do is make sure, I'm going to use my eighth inch angle. I want a little more control, and that's why you bump down into a smaller size. This again is a brush I had made. It's an eighth inch angle, but I wanted a longer bristle, so I wouldn't have to struggle with little short choppy strokes. Now, I've got my eighth inch angle. I want to drop a little shadow right below and to the right of those berries. What it's going to do is kind of nestle them down in those leaves and give them a little bit of a dimension and kind of seat them. And even up here, I'm going to put it. See what a difference just that little bit of paint makes. Okay. And now I think that's dry. Little bits of paint make a big difference. Back now with the same eighth inch awesome angle, my quarter inch, or um, deep burgundy. Eighth inch awesome angle, getting tongue tied here. I'm gonna flip it so it's a little easier. 
want to shade the bottom and right side and deep burgundy over the watermelon sliced is a beautiful Christmas color. There we go. Get a nice rosy red. I'm letting these berries be just a little bit brighter than that candle shaft. Even though I'm using the same colors, the amount of paint you put on is what will set them apart. We don't want the berries to look like they were made out of candle wax. Uh -huh. Those look pretty and they're nice and rosy. Now we will go back and add a little more shading. I'm going to let that dry first. Okay, so while that is drying, um, I'm kind of jumping around here. Let's go back to the jar and we'll start adding a little bit of shading on this top lip. And I don't know, I, I put this little um, tie around it so it's kind of hard to see, but the top edge of this lip is highlighted and then it's dark and then we'll start shading underneath of that or highlights underneath of that. So you can see that that kind of differentiates the, the top of this jar with the little shadow area there. So I've got my, I'm going to try my half inch angle. I like that really well. So, And we'll just highlight that top edge. Now we're using Spa Blue and what I'll do is um, I can go back and brighten those highlights with the Snow White so they'll be stronger. Now they look a little bit bright now. Oops. They look a little bit bright now, but really they're not as bright as they will be when they dry. It's always going to dry a little bit darker. See that has kind of a square edge. You see what I did? I went down below it with a little bit of a softer shade or highlight so that I can define that kind of a, I guess it's like a little rectangle lip. And I'm really, I really have my paint very thin. I know it's going to dry much, much lighter. I can always go back and add more. So I want to keep that thin so I don't have to go back and say, oh my goodness, I, should, I went too high. So I just kind of scooted across uh, the top of the jar with the toe of the brush. And I'm going to highlight down around the edges. If your brush is loaded correctly, you should be able to do quite a bit before you have to reload. My paint is really wet, which means I can move it around for a while even after it's on the jar. So I'm just going to go around, kind of tuck that in. This is the best part about decorative painting because you can make everything look so good. Okay, this is just a quick, like, float around the edge. Alright, so I've just got a simple float around the edge of the jar. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. We'll go back to the berries. You feel like a little toad hopping around here. Okay, let's go back into those berries. Aren't they pretty? Oh, but wait till we get done. They're going to be gorgeous. Alrighty, so we've got nice red berries. To make those really sink down into the leaves where they belong, I'm going to go back with my eighth inch angle and just a teeny touch of Payne's Gray. Here we go again with Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to scoop it right around that bottom edge of the berry and it just becomes that beautiful deep kind of a purpley color. And you want to make sure you don't lose the redness on the berry. I've got a little too much paint on there. That's what we're gonna just that soft hint of color. This is almost um, transparent float. It doesn't take much to make a big difference. Clean your brush often if it starts to walk across and get kind of messy. Again, my floats are very loose, so I can go back and kind of work the paint before it dries. And look how pretty that's becoming. Just that little hint of color just takes it up so many notches. I'm going to 
clean this up a little bit. What's nice about this, because we have that Payne's Gray shading around the shadows around the outer edge, they sort of kind of meld together and really work well. Not pretty. Now, also what makes this work well is the fact that I don't have that raised ridge. There's a little line there. I'm going to try to just soften that in without my, light, my angle. I don't have to work around that raised bump. Just right there. And I think... Actually, I think that's a light, light highlight because it's not down here. Okay, so we've got that on there. I can always go back and touch that up. I don't want them to get dark. So now I have my stylus and we're going to go in and add a little dip dot. And what I'm doing, I want to, my paint's just a little bit um, skimmed over, but I don't want real big dots. So I went in and added a little bit of water to my paint so that my dip dots are not going to be as big and heavy. They're just going to, I can get a tinier dip dot. So anytime you want a smaller dip dot, thin your paint down with water and you'll get just a nice little highlight. I'm going to start with the bigger berries because I know they need a bigger highlight than the smaller one. Again, I can always go back and add more. Aren't those pretty? They just kind of sparkle now. It's just those little touches. That's just the best part. All right, let's go back to the jar and add some more highlights. Hopefully, Chris, you'll stay out of your highlights on your berries here. Let's give them a chance to kind of dry. And I did add extra water in there, so it's going to be a little bit take a little longer but another plus thing because I used water in the highlights when they dry they're not going to be mounded uh, when the water dries it kind of settles down they're not too bad okay don't do that don't stick your finger in it to see if it's wet it's a bad way to find out if it is or isn't all right so we need to add some stronger highlights and I'm still sticking with the spa blue and my radical round, I have thinned the paint down, kind of soupy here, working it into my bristles, kind of flattening my brush out so that I don't have a sharp point. And I can go in and I know I can add some highlights here. A little bit strong, so I'm going to wipe that off. You want to follow the curve of the jar, and then when you go down the side, keep that straight. Same thing down here, we can follow that curve. Across the bottom, and keep that straight. A little bit here. Once I get these in, then I can, I can get a little braver about enhancing them. Now, I don't want to add any strong highlights right over top of my holly, but I can go down so that it really shows like it's a sparkle. I can even add some in here. And just kind of keep, this is where you get to play a little bit. I like this side to be a little brighter. That Remember, that's where my um, light source is from. And I'm still just dry brushing, trying to keep my strokes long so I don't have choppiness. And it comes over in the front here too, so we want to keep that. Going back here, I want that part to be a little stronger. And we are going back with a little bit of white as well. Now that I've got my basic highlights in there. I'm going to go back and just brighten these little corners up a little bit with some soft spa blue floats. I'm 
and we'll get those. We're, the bottom of a jar is always thicker, so your your um, I don't know if the word's opacity, but your translucency is going to be a little bit heavier down there. So your shading or highlighting can be a little bit stronger. And we want to define those edges nicely. And I can drag this over, but I don't want to get too heavy with that. Just want to get that look that kind of on the toe of my brush. I can give that a little bit of a dry brush hint. I don't know if you can see that or not. Just kind of drags over and gives that little... That's why it's so important to have strong sparkles on your candle. So if you go over it with this little bit of... Uh, sparkle that those are still going to outshine. There's a candle in there. It's really bright. All right, so we've got some of that on there. Now I can go in with white and start to really pull in some strong highlights. So our, our jar has some glossiness to it, but if we add a stronger highlight, it really starts to really um, begins to show that glassy effect. Now this side's going to be a little bit brighter. I'm going to brighten that up right there. Let's go this way. Everybody has a way that you can pull strokes straight easier. Mine is towards me. At least it is today. And see how I can build those highlights up equally and then also down here. So these highlights have to be the same brightness. And we'll just pull some light down below as well. A little bit over here. Just to add some shimmer and shine. This side won't be as bright, but we still want it to sparkle. light touch, just a little bit of paint, not much at all. I think I'll put a little bit over there. Always kind of fun to have a little lesser over here. Kind of keeps that going across. Oh, that looks kind of good, doesn't it? And you can kind of play around with this until you're happy with it, but I think it looks pretty good. And we haven't spent much time at all doing this. I don't want to get this too strong down here. Okay, now, I kind of am a sparkle girl. Who isn't? Oh my goodness. So, when I painted this, I did add some glamour dust. And I worked in glamour dust last night at my home studio, and I still have it all over me, so... Um, I didn't want to get it out today, but I was going to show you where I added Glamour Dust. I'm hoping that you can see. Let's go in just a little bit closer. Um, come on, pick it up. All right, well, maybe I'll tell you. I took a little bit of... Well, actually, what I do before I add my Glamour Dust, let's go ahead and finish this up. I do spray seal it, and I absolutely love... The Americana Matte Spray Sealer. This is wonderful. It puts a very low luster sheen on it, protects it. Um, it doesn't make it super shiny. This has the low luster matte spray on it. Holds up super well. It's a nice finish on it. I usually do two or three very light coats. I don't like to do a heavy coat because I don't want it running and dripping. Uh, patience something I've learned over life that it's <laughs> if you're not patient you end up taking twice as much time so very important you want to seal this well and a deco art spray sealer is wonderful uh, if I do a brush on varnish I'll go back to my sponges the specialty sponges and just brush it on these sponges are so dense it's not going to leave any bubbles or streaks so it, the application is super smooth. So 
either way you're going to get a nice finish you don't want to see brush strokes for sure alrighty so we've got our spray sealer on there or your varnish whatever you prefer I'm going to go in and I use the reason I put my glamour dust on after the finish well there's a couple reasons uh, the first and foremost if you varnish over top of it you're going to dull down the sparkles and we, we want to get the full impact of those sparkles really make them look elegant and beautiful and number two when you brush over it if you have any loose sparkles you're just going to embed them in the varnish whether you spray seal it or brush varnish you're going to get those to be embedded in there so um, if you put them on over top it works best you can use what do you use to put this the glamour dust on I'm kind of big on using starlight varnish it is I thought I had a bottle here and I don't uh, it's an Americana product deco art it's a, a satin varnish but it already has sparkles in it and I'm thinking you know if you're gonna put sparkles on if you have more sparkles it's just gonna work hand in hand so I would take my brush and I'm just going to brush that starlight varnish right around that halo and just very gently uh, sprinkle the glamour dust on. I think I talked about the glitter misters which is a little pump that you can use to um, poof the varnish and it makes a nice even coverage on the, the piece. So I put a little bit around the halo and then I wish you could see that trying to get a good shimmer on that. Oh, it's just not going to show up. On the top edge of these holly leaves, and I would do it where I've got my highlights, just put on, on this one probably down here because they're overlapping, but just a little bit. Too much, you're going to lose that impact, so you want to kind of hone in just so you catch somebody's eye. If you put it everywhere, you just kind of lose the impact. So a little bit here on these top little holly leaves and a little bit about around the halo. That's all you're going to need. It's just enough to really kind of sweeten it, add a little bit of elegance, a little bit of whimsy. Helps to make everything kind of sparkle and dance, especially if this is hanging on a tree. And that glamour dust off of those twinkle lights is just gorgeous. Okay, any questions, please let me know. I think we're to the finish point. I did tie a little bit. I love the red and white baker's twine. I just think that adds a lot of Christmas charm. And um, I was going to put some greenery on that, but it was, with this, it was too much. So... You know, try different things. A pretty little decorative ribbon, and I would get stick with a quarter inch or smaller. You don't need a big ribbon. You don't want to take the impact or the focus away from your candle. That's what is so pretty. So you want to keep that there. I did use the uh, 22 gauge rustic wire to hang on and then just kind of twist and curl the little ends so nobody gets poked. You don't want any uh, injuries when somebody's trying to you see a little curl. That's a good way to finish up that pokey, poking in and out. And I think this is finished. The backside is a great place to personalize, add a sentiment, put your name on it, the year makes it super special. Okay. And I, th I think we are finished. Gosh, we zoomed through that pretty quick. Oh, speaking of zoom. <laughs> Let me go over here. Okay. I want to thank you for joining me today, but before you go, I want to talk about um, a new endeavor that Sandy McTeer and I are, uh, are going to do. And you may be familiar with Cupboard Distributing's annual festivals. And we have done our Christmas festival for, oh, I don't know, what, 10 years? Um, and this year we decided to move it to August. So we couldn't call it Christmas Fest. So we decided to call it our Summer Fest. And Sandy McTeer is coming to teach. Well, with everything that's going on in our society, 
being together um, is not a good thing, unfortunately. I was thinking the other day, being homebound and staying in um, a, away from people gives us an opportunity to finish up a lot of our projects, but we still enjoy coming together as a group and painting. And I know whenever I teach, travel teach across the country, it's so much fun to be able to be with other painters and share and care and laugh and have such a great time. So we first talked about uh, canceling the festival, but we decided we didn't want to do that. And we talked about Zoom. And I don't know if you're familiar with Zoom, but it is absolutely a wonderful tool. It is, it will provide um, the same detailed student teacher instruction as you would receive in a live seminar or where you get together physically, but you can uh, take the class in the comfort of your home. You have all of your tools and supplies. You don't have to haul them anywhere. You don't have to do travel arrangements. You don't have to book a hotel. Um, you can eat a snack whenever you want. It's just a really nice alternative. And uh, one of the things about it, it's user friendly. If you're a little bit nervous about downloading new software and whatnot, it's, it's very simple. If I can do it, you can do it. And it's free. So um, all you would have to do is sign up for the classes. We're going to make arrangements to have included in the class cost all these surfaces and stencils, stamps, whatever you need will be included and it's all listed on our website. Ooh, I think it's right there. Oh, there we go. Um, Covert Distributing's website, www.cdwood.com. There's a little, um, what do you call those, banners on the side or tabs or whatever. Just click on Summerfest, everything's explained. So Sandy and I are super excited because you can now take a class if you're across the country. Um, you can take a class I, I think one of the best perks is that it's recorded. So even after the class is over, I, I know when when you take a class with a group and you go home and you think, now what did she say about that? Or I, I don't remember. Well, you can go back and, and watch it over and over and over. So um, Summerfest 2020 at Cupboard Distributing is now being offered as a Zoom seminar. It's gonna be fantastic. We are so excited, we can wait, can hardly wait. And I think it's going to be the wave of the future. So encourage you to think about it. Um, jump on the Zoom train and you know, we can, we can do this together. So, all right, we've talked about Zoom, we've finished our ornament and um, I wanna thank you again for joining me today. It is so much fun. Please let me know what you would like me to show you. I think doing the little projects is kind of a fun uh, switch other than just showing a technique. So if you, if you like that, let me know. If you have any requests, let me know. I do read everything. Um, but I do enjoy showing you different techniques to help make your painting life a little more fun, a little less stressful. We, we do this for fun, so we don't want to have to... Um, spend a lot of time being frustrated. We, we want to enjoy this and share it with those we love. So again, thank you for joining me and we'll see you next week on Create with Chris at Cupboard Distributing. Bye-bye.